Hey, friends. I woke up this morning and heard, saw a lot of people losing their minds because the CMA Awards ended up not recognizing the passing of John Prine, Billy Joe Shaver, and Jerry Jeff Walker. And a lot of other people also, including two friends of mine, Justin Earl and David Olney. I have to be completely honest with you. I've never watched the CMA Awards, and I've never cared about it. I don't care at all what the CMA Awards think. Living in Nashville for 12 years, the only reason I knew there was some kind of an award show going on is the traffic got really bad, and you could see all of the people in $1,000 suits and spray-on tans walking around, just looking for a camera to get in front of. And I've never related to it, and I'm kind of... I think I would be more shocked if they actually did recognize, you know, John Prine, Jerry Jeff Walker, and Billy Joe Shaver. I just c expect the worst of those kind of shows. You know, it's a TV show. If you like it, I think that's great. You know, you enjoy it. We all watch bad TV. You know, I, I don't watch much TV at all these days. I haven't for a few years, but I used to, when I was a kid, I'd watch professional wrestling and, uh, you know, there's a lot of commonalities between professional wrestling and the music business. I'm here to tell you that professional wrestling is more real than the music business. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, people like Harley Race and Dick the Bruiser would realize that the audience was starting to realize wrestling wasn't real. And they would tell their friends, I can't convince the audience that wrestling is real, but I can convince them that I am real. And I'm here to tell you John Prine is real. Jerry Jeff Walker was real. Billy Joe Shaver was as real as the day is long. And the music industry is fake as all hell. And the quicker we all realize that and accept it, the less we will get bent out of shape that a bunch of fake people with their fake TV show get all decide they're going to ignore our heroes. And, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about John Prine. I talked about Billy Joe Shaver and Jerry Jeff Walker a couple different times, but John Prine passed before I started, you know, talking to you all here. And, uh, you know, I absolutely love John Prine. One thing I think about with Prine or Jerry Jeff Walker, or Billy Joe Shaver, it's counterculture. These are counterculture figures. These aren't pop culture figures. These are, uh, people who were always in the margins for most of their life and uh, provided an alternative. You know, I have a hard time believing that they cared at all about somebody giving them a trophy for anything. I can't imagine that when they were making those records or writing those songs, I thought, man, if only some great big corporation would recognize me for what I'm doing here and give me a trophy. I really don't believe that was the case. I might be completely wrong, and uh, you guys are, you know, it's fine for you guys to tell me I'm wrong and correct me if you know something I don't. But uh, when I was a kid growing up, I would listen to The Replacements, and when I listen to The Replacements, I don't think of them up in Minneapolis thinking, man, if only we can win a Grammy. You know, I don't... I don't think that ever came into their minds. I, it just doesn't seem like uh, that would be the case. And I've always liked the counterculture. I've always been part of that or tried to be part of that. I don't want to have anything to do with, you know, this mainstream that hands out trophies and poses for photos. It's vapid. It's vacuous. And I look bad with a spray on tan. But I promised I would say something about John Prine. I want to say this. You know, John Prine is one of those guys that when I was working on construction sites, you could put on John Prine album and everybody there just understood it. You know, there was a generation whose uncles were killed in Vietnam. And when you listen to Sam Stone, you know, you could think of that guy down the street who came back and was just all wrong and messed up. You know, I'd plant trees and we would listen to him in the truck. And uh, when I moved to Nashville, I remember going to Arnold's country kitchen it's a meat and three the best food in nashville i think there's a bunch of five-star restaurants that the new york times writes about that are fancy and all the cool kids hang out at but and i've ate there somebody else picked up the check because i'm too cheap to pick up that check you know forty dollars a plate is not my not my scene 
But I think Arnold's is about the, the best eaten in Nashville. But I remember sitting down, and they had these cafeteria-style tables, and there was someone sitting next to me. And I never looked over because I was trying to be polite, just talking with my friends. That person got up and left after about five minutes. I looked over. It was John Prine. I'm sitting there eating next to John Prine and don't even know it. And he's just blending in at a meet and three. But John Prine knew when all of the meatloaf specials were at the diners and the meet and threes around Nashville. And he would go on those days and he'd just blend in. You know, it's John Prine. He's like one of the regular folks. He just happens to be a regular guy with this insane amount of talent. So another great John Prine memory for me being in Nashville is about once or twice a year, Jim Rooney uh, would play at the station in. It was Jim Rooney and his irregulars. Great producer, a guy who's done so many cool things in his life. But he's buddies with John Prine. And he had a band. Sean Camp would be in the band. Uh, Jamie Hartford. Uh, Pat McInerney, I believe, was playing drums. I can't remember everybody in the band. It was a great band. Unrehearsed. They would show up and play. Somewhere in the m- middle of the night, if you're lucky, John Prine would walk in through the front door carrying his guitar go up on stage and take it out and start playing eight or 12 of the great all-time great John Prine hits, you know, or great songs. This place is, it's a station in, it's kind of the CBGBs of bluegrass music. It's uh, I think the capacity is 120 and it's just an amazing thing to, to be in that tiny environment, you know, listening to John Prine and he's just showing up because he wants to hang out with his friends and play some songs you know, just completely real as the day. They'd hang out on the side of the stage. People would walk up and say hi. I never did. I'm not the kind of guy that wants to go bother anybody. I should have went and got my picture taken with John Prine, but I didn't. But it was just enough to sit and listen to the music and love it. You know, I realized that uh, these award shows bring a lot of money to town. And, um, you know, the music business in Nashville in general loves, you know, they're trying to make some money and they love to hand each other trophies and pat each other on the back and talk about how great each other is. And I just never related to it. A lot of my friends probably get paychecks from that and I understand it. I'm not saying it's evil. I'm just saying I don't care about it. It's never been anything that I cared about and award shows, If somebody's having an award show, you can pretty much count that I could care less about it. The only exception might be the IBMAs. I figure uh, that world, you have to be so good to be recognized, and it's your peers recognizing you, that uh, there's a lot of credibility to the IBMAs. And anybody that would recognize Mike Bubb and David Greer for their greatness, they're all right in my book. But I just wanted to let you guys know how I think about it. I'd love for you to tell me how you think about it down in the comments. And like I said, I mean this in all positivity. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just being honest. And I think it's good to just take away the power of these organizations. And, you know, it's a TV show. It's like getting mad watching Gilligan's Island because Gilligan messes up and uh, they end up stuck on the island. And I've probably yelled at the TV for that one or two times. You know, it's like getting mad because Horshack messed it all up for the Sweat Hogs on Welcome Back, Cotter. That's all it is, is a TV show. And it's not a very good TV show at that. So with that in mind, much love to you guys. I'll get back to the positivity next time. (laughs) Take care of each other.